out. Well, hey, Ben, it's Jamie that's me here. Welcome back to the channel, honey. Go ahead and hit that like button as you come on in. Some of y'all be forgetting to hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? So I be having to remind y'all. If I could remember again, as I do my review, I'm going to remind some of y'all to go on here to hit the like button. Because where y'all be forgetting. And then I understand some of y'all want to watch the whole review before you hit that like button or whatever. And then you just end up forgetting. It be like that, okay? So just make sure you do it, all right? But anywho, I want to talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta, the latest episode. Um, First of all, let me get this out my ear. Let me get this out my ear because I'm over here listening to some stuff. But anywho, while I'm trying to do the review at the same time. But let's just say this interview was giving every bit of lackluster to me. Um, it was something about it that was off. It was giving filler episode. And I really think that it was off because we did not have Miss Candy Burris, nor did we have Drew Sedora. And sometimes when you watch Real Housewives of Atlanta and this is the situation where people are not present, sometimes they at least give you a shot of what those people are up to, although they're not in these particular scenes and won't be on these trips or whatever, right? And, yeah, so I didn't really like it. I feel like they need a Drew around or they need a Candy around or something because these group of ladies, if they were the only ones on the show, and this is what we had in Real Housewives of Atlanta went into the next season without a candy or a Drew. I wouldn't watch it. I'm just going to be real honest with y'all. I love me some Kenya Moore. But, girl, I'm not. It's not enough for me. And there were parts of the show where I was a little disappointed in Kenya. And we'll talk about that. You know, so it's just not enough. Sign your baby. We bored. We bored. I don't care about what y'all talking about, girl. I am talking about we because I'm speaking for me and you, girl. We is bored. <laughs> um, Marlo, baby, it's giving you need to go to a mental institute because I do not think therapy is helping you at this particular time, okay? I do not think therapy is working. You love coming on camera, parading around your nephews and stuff, acting like, you know, things are happy-go-lucky and shout out to the therapist and this and that, but then you hovering over Drew, snapping on Drew, going off on Drew about a situation you're trying to force to fit in to somebody else's situation, girl. It's not happening for me. And it's a given they might need to tie you down for at least a month. At least a month. When you're done filming, you might need to hit what Miss Mel be over there doing where she don't talk to nobody. But you need to go into an institute. Because I don't know. And I be wanting to like Marlo. I feel like I could have been one of the people that may have wanted Marlo to get a peach, okay? Um, and primarily... The reason for that was really because Nene said she would never get one. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I can't remember how I felt. Or maybe I felt indifferent. Like, she get one cool, she don't, she don't. But, ma'am, um, it's going to your head or something. Like, I, I, I'm not understanding what's happening with you. I'm not understanding why your expectations for people are extremely high but your expectations when it comes to the relationship you have with Nene Leaks and my personal is extremely low you know like she gets all of these passes but when it comes to Miss Kenya it's a problem for you you know I don't I don't know why you're so bothered by Kenya um and then when it comes to Kenya you so bothered and you know what it gives me a little bit it gives me that you've tried so hard to change your image from being the girl that constantly you know with the constant mug shots and whatever background and it seems like no matter what you do the people that you're trying to put an impression upon they're not willing to fully accept you and I think that that bothers you that you're able to kind of like convince a whole host of people but these two ladies that you would like to heavily be aligned with they they don't you know what I'm saying they see through you you feel what I'm saying? And you can't pretty much work your magic on them like you have other people. And I feel like that really, really bothers you because you spend all your life trying to be accepted by this community and the community really don't accept you. But then you go on interviews with Jason Lee and stuff and talk about how you don't or whatever interviews you've done about how the the circles that you're really in, Miss Candy Burris isn't even a part of because you're speaking on the fashion, right? So that's what be confusing to me because it's like if – those people are so high on the totem pole and they're so much more important than Candy. Why are you so bothered by her and Kenya? Girl, you over there in bigger circles, aren't you? <laughs> so I'm just a little confused as to why they keep you so flustered and so fucking bothered. And you know, another thing while I'm speaking on the Jason Lee, because I watched the interview, but I never, you know, reviewed it or talked about it with you guys. But something I wanted to highlight 
Marlo used to date a billionaire. Now, I was always rumored that it was Ted Turner. But, girl, I don't really know. I'm just telling you what the rumors say. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know who the man was. They just said he was a millionaire. And she was dating him at the time. And I believe she said she was offered a peach, but she did not accept that peach because I believe she wasn't at a place where she really wanted to let people all into her life. I don't know if she could have been still out there you know, doing a few things for a piece of change and she didn't want nobody in on that. I don't know what it was, but she declined the offer at that time. Then when it was time for her to try, like then when she wanted to get the peach, she couldn't get it. It was like they weren't offering it to her or whatever the case was. And I was like, she said something about she felt as though it had a lot to do with her past, like her, um, what she said, she felt like it had a lot to do with her past, her mug shots and all of that. And I was just like, nah, Marlo, because if that's the case, NeNe Leakes would have never made it on to the show and she would have never went on to be who the hell she is. NeNe was a stripper and she's been arrested, I do believe, more than once. So your past ain't have shit to do with it, to be honest, okay? I think you need to be concerned with that billionaire, okay? Because I believe originally the billionaire wasn't really here for it or something like that, or if she did it, he didn't want to be a part of it or whatever. Of course, because I believe he was married at the time or whatever. But my my thing is, did, you, did it ever occur to you that the billionaire probably put a word in for them to not offer your ass no damn peach? Okay, once he found out about it, yeah, they had already offered it to you at that time. He didn't know nothing about it until you told him about it, convinced you to likely decline the offer. So by the time that you really wanted it, he could have been in their ear because, you know, billionaires have access like that. But anyway, girl, like well, you're trying to say that it's uh, probably from your, um, your mug shots and all this and that. Like... I be wanting to like Marlo so bad, I swear I do. I really, really do. But the little victim thing she be trying to do and then be acting like she really turned her life around and shit be killing me softly. And then when she be trying to put on her pop, her um, professional voice her, and, and be talking, it just be like, Marlo, you don't even say, it's not even flowing out of your mouth properly. So we know like you being fake as hell. Like, it don't even sound like you. I hate when she tries to tra talk proper in her interview. It's like, girl, talk like you talk, bitch. Talk, you the same bitch. Come on, Tammy Roman, girl. Talk how the fuck you talk. All right? Giving us all this extra shit. Bitch, talk how you talk, ho. Because that's who you're going to be when you walk about this interview any damn way. Okay? Anyway, girl, let me get into the review. Because I just had to talk about her for a second. Because she be getting on my fucking nerves, girl. She really do. But anywho, so Kenya. Kenya, let me tell you something. I love you, girl. And you know, it, it was like at least... Whew, Girl, I feel like it's at, it was at least, I don't know how long you was, I want to say a decade, but I feel like you wasn't on the show that long. But, girl, close to it, I couldn't stand your motherfucker. Do you hear me? I couldn't stand you, girl. But I think you won me over about, like, 2019, 2020. And I've been here for you. But, I'm, but because I'm here for you and I'm just being really honest with you because, you know what I'm saying, I got to keep it real with you, right? And I love me some you. But what you need to do is get that booty done. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just gonna have to put it out there, ma'am. Like I just can't take it anymore. Um, you gonna have to work on that. Like I I just oh ma'am, it's to not giving what you thought. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. The booty not matching the legs, Kenya. It's it's just not matching the legs, and I. <sighs> I am upset about it. I am. I am upset about it. Um, although I, I do cringe at the thoughts of, you know, BBLs just a bit, you know, just a bit. Um, I'm not going to say I want you to have one that's done proper. I don't know. Just take some of the ass out. Maybe that's what you do. Just get somebody to suck out a little bit. Go through the K. Michelle program or something. But you're going to have to fix that. Or you're going to have to wear more flattering tights because it's something about it because the way your legs are so small and the way your butt cuffs and it's just, it looked like it hurt. Like it's not even a, like, it just looked like it hurt. Um, I think you're going to fall on your butt at some point this season. And I hate that for you, you know, because the people definitely going to drag you, you know what I'm saying? I hate for you to get dragged, but we have to keep it real. Okay. As a fan, um, Girl, I was I, I couldn't even pay attention to the dance moves because I was looking at their booty. And it just it's devastating, you know. Um, it really is. And I know you probably got it done a long time ago before people were able to kind of perfect a little bit. But I don't know, you got a little too much put in there or something. I just want you to get that fixed. Like I don't know. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I'm not, but just know that I hate it for you. I just, ooh, that booty just horrible. So, Kenya need to get her booty done. 
she ended up trying to work on a workout routine, a dance routine. She need to work on that booty routine. Um, go get it redone. You still have time. Monetta, they're in there practicing. Monetta gets a phone call from the man that's supposed to be dating Kenya, Roy. <laughs> God said, Lord, I am over there FaceTiming Monetta. What you FaceTiming Monetta for? What is that about? Do you guys have business together? Now, they might be good friends. I don't think Roy and Monetta have anything going on. We do know that Monetta is married and stuff. I don't think that Monetta is doing anything like that. But I'm just like, Roy, how you call Monetta, but you ain't called Miss Kenya to see what she was up to? So Monetta gets the FaceTime, gives it to Kenya. They over there chit-chatting and talking and stuff like that. They go to the confessional and ask Kenya, girl, what is he giving? She said, oh, he's giving a 9.6, honey. Let me tell you something. If Miss Kenya more don't watch Erica De Niro TV, I don't know who do. <laughs> because when the bitch sat up there and said the Yelp review was given 9.6, so I said, girl, Erica, Erica, she over there tuning in, girl. She's over there watching because Erica's the only person I hear talking about Yelp reviews, okay? Now, Kenya, the Yelp review that you've given to the people is a 9.6 because of the sex game. My question is about the chemistry outside of the bedroom. What is that Yelp really giving? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if she's saying it's a 9.6, I mean, okay, girl. I don't know. I ain't, I ain't doing none of that with that man or nothing like that. I could just tell y'all what it was when I met him at the Witch College. Kill me crazy, sat down, was giving a little scratch here, scratch there, or whatever. And I'm like, I guess it is good if you scratch it like that. Maybe, I don't know. But whatever it is, so girl, um, it's a 9.6, according to Miss Kenya. Now, I don't know if Kenya really got it in with that man, or if she's saying some things to make Mark a little jealous, or whatever the case is. Some part of me is hoping that she actually got it in, because I don't want Kenya to be holding out. I hate to say it. I really hate to say it, because, yeah, she's still married, but you're married to a clown. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get a divorce. I don't think that you should put yourself and your body or whatever on hold, because of this nigga. Like, if you... Okay, it's clear y'all not getting back together. Y'all live in two different states. He made no initiative to try to move down here or anything. Um, I think he saw you for money from the, from the very first moment that he met you. I think he look up, looked up your net worth. I think he looked up who the hell you were and how you could be an asset to him. So whatever you wanted, he went along with it because he saw the benefit for himself. That's just what I think. So I think he had no intentions on really taking you further than where you were. And having that child with this man only sealed the deal for him, in my personal opinion. And if you think he ain't got no life insurance policy on you, then you stupid. Okay? But all in all, I just feel like uh, Miss Kenya, um, get it in. Do Live your life, honey, because I guarantee you, Mark living his and probably was living it even when y'all was like together for real for real you feel what I'm saying so girl do what you want to do out here in these streets or whatever so anywho Kenya gets off the phone she talks about Magic City Classic um of course Magic City Classic for a lot of people that do not know involves my university Alabama State University and Alabama A&M University okay it is one of the largest games and it happens somewhere around like Halloween or something like that somewhere always in, at the end of October so She's supposed to be a part of a few things. Like she's supposed to be, I guess, I guess you would say like an ambassador in some sense for the Magic City Classic. She's supposed to be a part of a foundation where they're going to post, they're supposed to have like an upscale event or whatever. And then she's also supposed to do the parade. And then I think she's going to perform or do something with the band at a later time. So it's giving, she's probably an ambassador for this past um a Magic City Classic, and I honestly didn't even know. I, I don't recall Miss Miss Kenya being a part of any of that. I don't remember them announcing any of that. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't paying, paying that close attention. But she's going to be um, a part of that. So I'm like, okay, then, Miss Kenya, well, go ahead. Do your thing, girl. We'll see how that's going to play out, all right? So she's trying to get a little dance routine together. Um, and we'll see, okay? Let's get to Sonya because, girl, we are get, we're, we're bored. We're bored. Um, and it's sad because y'all know Miss Cynthia used to be bored at times um, or boring. But I would much rather for me, I'd rather watch Cynthia than Sonya. I just, I, I'm not featuring Sonya like I thought I was going to like her on the show. I'm just not. She definitely gives me a bit of Cynthia's energy. Like it's something about it is giving bland a little bit. So I just... How y'all feeling about Sonya? Like, I just, I mean, she's boring. Anywho, so she's going through her schedule. She gets on the phone with her sister's husband, gives the entire rundown of everything that she needs him to do. And I, in all honesty, I'm like, bitch, you need more than one assistant. You need more than one assistant where you need to get on your candy birds. Candy got Don Juan and she also got somebody else, okay? She got, I think, Jamie or somebody. Girl, you need more than one assistant than just him ripping and running and going everywhere, you know? So, uh 
Get that together. So she's over there trying to, she's going to tell her family. I feel like she's trying to hold her family hostage uh, because she's going to tell them, before we all part ways and go our separate ways, I need us to stick, stay true to the things that we said that we're going to do as far as the business and all of that. We need to stay focused. And it's like, Sonya, you pissing me off. Um, and it's crazy because I am bored, but then I, I'm, I'm pissed off at the same time because it's like... You trying to hold on to your family so bad, and I don't understand that. Like, I'm close with my family, but it's like, girl, let these let these folks go if they want to go. Like, I understand sometimes, you know, family got to move in or whatever, and actually with the pandemic and all of the other stuff that's going on, the rise in prices and shit, whatever, whatever, I feel like it kind of makes sense. And it's not an uncommon thing that people do. A lot of people live together. And, I, girl, when I started driving to, like, these multi-family homes, like, far out, it be like 12 cars in the yard like I'm like girl ain't no way you finna tell me all them cars belong to one person like girl it's a giving a few generations living at one house and I don't blame people you know what I'm saying I don't blame them for that but at the same time if your husband is sitting up here telling you that he kind of he's he's now at a place where he wants it to just be y'all and y'all already made an agreement ahead of time that that's what y'all were gonna do within this time frame why are you trying to hold your fucking family hostage Go and hire some other people. You already see how stressful it is working with other with, with folks. You know what I'm saying? Or at least with your family. So go hire some other folks and go like, you know what I'm saying? Let it go. Did her sister get in the confessional talk about some us being around help Sonya when it comes to Deucey and all this other stuff? And it's like, bitch, even if y'all don't stay there, don't mean y'all can't help her out with Deuce. You still can help her with Deuce. If that shit could go over there and drop his ass off at your house, get a house up the street or something like that. If y'all can afford it, go up the road or whatever. Y'all ain't got to live in that lady house. Um, What else? So Sonya uh, tells them that Ross is, she tells her sister, because her mama already knows. She says, listen, Ross is ready for y'all, you know, ready for it to just be us or whatever. Her sister talks about how everything is going to change. Duh, B-I-T-C-H. It's supposed to change. Y'all can't be here forever. It should change. Okay. It should change. Um, Sonya says, but it has nothing to do with y'all. And the sister's like, yeah. So it seems like she's offended. B-I-T-C-H, don't you dare sit up there and get offended when you just sat up here and called this lady a dean back the other day. Then you want to talk about how she's self-centered or whatever the case is. Like, girl, you already got your issues with your sister. So your sister want to give you, or at least her husband, want to let your wings fly so you can go somewhere else. And now you want to feel offended by that? Like, who's really getting self-centered here? Anywho. So, um, yeah, she goes to the confessional, says that she's self-centered. Um, she's not selfish. And I said, I'm not sure um, how that's considered self-centered when it comes to um, when it comes to y'all. I don't think that's being self-centered because when y'all moved in and she gave y'all all those jobs to work for her and stuff, you you ain't got no choice but to know that it's going to center around her. Everything that y'all do is centered around her. Y'all live in her damn house. Y'all work for her. What else? Like, it's going to be about her. Like, that's just what it is. She's the business that keep y'all motherfuckers employed to keep the thing going. So, of course, she is going to be centered around herself. Duh. Now, when it comes to her husband, you know, um, I feel like that's where she's more self-centered than she is with the family. You know, because it's like, she, to me, I feel like she don't be hearing him. It's more so about what it is that she wants. And she's not actually making a move towards nothing. And it's like, Sonya, if you want to be married to your family, just say that. Because you ain't trying to grow your family with more kids. Whenever he's out of town, that's when you want to have a conversation about, you know, getting pregnant and having more kids. And it's like, girl, you ain't trying to have no more kids for real. Like, you already said that last season, and that's really what you're saying. You know, um, so... It is what it is. You ain't trying to have no more kids and you trying to keep your family around. And I hockey feel like you try to keep your family around as a way for you to delay, you know, the process of you likely having another child with your husband because your family runs so much of an interference. And it's like, if you ain't trying to be married, just say that. And um, if you'd rather be married to your family, say that as well. OK, uh, but either way, good luck. Let's keep going. Um, Marlo. Go ahead and like up the video, you guys, if you have yet to do so. Go ahead and support the channel by hitting the like. Um, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it, especially if you've been entertained thus far. Um, Marlo. Marlo pretending um, to be a monty again by bringing her nephews along for this whole Halloween thing that she tries to do or whatever. <sighs> 
girl, I be so tired of hearing this bitch talk about her being a auntie. I ain't even gonna lie. It's like, girl, I don't even hear the people that's actually moms talking about how they your mama all the goddamn time. But here she go. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, she got the... Ooh, anyway, so Marlo walks in looking like a bag of bones. <laughs> That's what it's definitely giving. Girl, come in there with her wig cap on. I say, y'all better hurry up and put this goddamn wig on Marlo because Marlo over here looking just like her fucking age without that wig. Put a wig on Marlo, it's going to throw her back five to ten years, okay? Take that bitch off. It's def definitely going to speed up the process. And I just, I said what I said, okay? Because that's exactly what it's giving. Um, hurry up and put that wig on that lady. So she talks about getting her record expunged. And she says that, you know, she made some bad decisions multiple times over and over in the past. And when I guess she was, you know, giving up, like signing guilty, whatever it was that she was doing to get out of the situation, she ended up giving up her right to bear arms. Now that she has her nephew, she feels the need to protect them. One, because it's so far along, like it's so far away, like it happened 20 or however many years ago. And on top of that, her home was recently violated. So with that, she feels the need to protect herself. Now with that, I am on Marlo with that. I do feel like when you make a certain... um decisions when you're young that result in you losing the right to bear arms or whatever the case is I don't think that should be or even voting I don't think that should be something that you hold over a person's head for the rest of their life I think depending on when they get out and their probation after probation all rights, in my personal opinion, should be restor restored because you can't sit up here and say that you're going to put people in prisons, put them in jails or whatever the case is. And really, it's the, it was supposed to be like rehabilitation for people when they go away and then be able to get them right back into society and shit. And it's completely opposite. They just have these rundown ass buildings, throwing all these people in jails and prisons, and then they make all this fucking money off of it. But anywho, and then when the people get out, they have they struggle getting jobs. And it's so crazy because a lot of y'all motherfuckers like Walmart and other people, y'all be the main ones pouring into these prisons and likely the main ones that's having a hard time giving these people fucking jobs afterwards as well. I'm using Walmart as an example because I know for a fact that they do from a documentary that I saw, but there are other companies. I'm using them as an example, but I'm talking about a lot of companies that invest into these prisons that then these people get out of prison. Y'all were okay making money off of them when they was locked up, but y'all not okay with giving these people jobs so they be struggling getting all kind of jobs like that don't make no damn sense so once a person gets out y'all need to do like some of these colleges and have a from college to career type of pathway where they go from prison to be able to go back into the work society for some people that actually want to do right and then once their probationary period is up whether it's 5 10 15 20 years get on people they motherfucking rights back to where they can they can bear arms or whatever the case is or if it's going to be like, let's say somebody on probation for 20 years, girl, ain't no telling what can happen in 20 years to where they got to protect their family. So with that being said, or themselves, with that being said, there should be some type of process to where, oh, you have to take oh so many classes during this probationary period. You have to show us you know how to handle a gun. You have to qualify for this, that, that. Whatever it is y'all need to put in place for people to get their shit back, y'all need to figure that out. But again, it's also going to come down to who the people vote for. And it's not just voting for your damn president and your governor, girl. You got to vote for the people that's local in your counties as well but people don't be thinking about this so y'all do what y'all want to do out here in these damn streets but back to marlo i am with marlo on that i do think that her um i do think that her record i See, I'm wondering how that works. If your record is expunged, meaning like it goes away, how are you able to just get your rights restored? I guess once it's seen once it's expunged, like Sheree had got hers expunged, girl. I guess it's like and then that's the other thing. Let me go ahead and jump to that real quick. Then we'll come back to the expunge. Bitch, you want to sit up there and you want to talk about Miss Candy and you want to talk about how Candy said she wear a wide. She wear a wide. She help people wear a wide, but she ain't help me. Bitch, why you want to ask Sheree? Because you be up her ass more than anybody. Then Sheree get hers expunged. Sheree should have had a person that could have told you what the hell to do. Hello? But you over there pressed about Miss Candy. Definitely giving storyline and it's definitely giving force. But we're going to get back to the expunge. So I don't know how that how that would necessarily work once you get them expunged if you're going to be able to just automatically, you know, get your shit cleared up. Because I would think it just because they expunged doesn't mean that it's going to get cleared up, but I guess maybe so. But then my other question is this, Marlo, you got a lot of them. So how many you need to get expunged? You trying to get the whole record expunged? Because it looked like you had about 15 mugshots. So are you trying to get just two of them? 
or what or maybe it's just the first one because all that's when you really gave up your rights on the first one and then after that everything else just was obsolete because you did everything on the first round i'm just trying to understand how that works um i still agree with you though i still definitely think that you should have access to that and you got your nephews and somebody broke into your house like i definitely agree with marlo she should have the right to bear arms period so y'all need to figure that shit out um what else um oh girl let me let me scale back on the cuss words girl i probably said 20 just now so she says that she wants to yeah be able to protect herself and her nephews got that um she says courtney's supposed to be helping her with that it's so funny how you forcing courtney in girl girl we i don't know how i feel about miss courtney i want to like i want to like everybody on the cast but i just don't it's just really that simple um how you jump over Sheree and go straight to Courtney? And it's so funny because Sheree, you want to sit up there and throw something up in Kenya's face. I'm so Kenya, what, how did how was it when you ate ass? How, now, what was it like when you ate it? No, bitch, what was it like when you expunged that record? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Hmm? What was it like when you got your stuff cleared up? Because one thing about Sheree, she going to know how to clear some up. And she also going to know how to get some shit out of her name. And she also going to know how to pay, how to not pay motherfuckers. So while I'm over here talking about Sheree, girl, I need to be friends with her ass. So I can see how she be out here for this and the people so I can finesse them too. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Are you there, ma'am? Come back. Let's talk. Okay? So I need to be over there trying to be cool with Sheree, girl. You might know, you know, definitely know tricks of trades that I don't know shit about. But anywho, I ain't mad at it, girl um marlo okay so um marlo says that uh candy says she wear a lot she wear a lot or whatever like that but she ain't never helped me girl why does candy need to help you and you want to talk about well she ain't never helped me she wear a lot but she ain't never helped me get my record expunged bitch probably because she was too busy getting your ass the agent <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. Remember the agent that you got as you're working with Real Housewives of Atlanta? Yeah, it's the same one for Miss Candy. Remember how she helped you get that? So I'm a little confused. And I'm sure Candy has helped you with other things, but that we know for a fact. So why are you sitting over here trying to shit on this lady name like she ain't never do nothing for you? What why is it? Because you ain't have nobody. Candy helped you get somebody. Okay, but you want to talk about what she didn't do when it came down to the record being expunged. And then you want to go to a newbie because you want to ingrade her into the housewives lifestyle. You want to bring her into the show. You feel what I'm saying? But you could have just hopped and skipped over there and asked me Sheree or somebody else. Right. But let's keep going. <clears throat> so um, what else? Courtney come in. And she shows up, Courtney, um, I feel like she's only helping Marlo for access and bragging rights. I do. Um, I think once they clash, because that will happen, Marlo has clashed with every single friend that she has had. Um, when that happens, I think Courtney's going to bring that up in her face and she's going to throw it in her face. Um, and I also feel like Courtney is likely an opportunist. So um, that's another reason why she's helping Marlo so that she can, you know, have that in. You feel what I'm saying? Um, what else? Marlo's Marlo talks about her, her nephew, Quentin, the one that died by the hands of his roommate who happened to work at OLG. Now, Quentin also worked at OLG, but he stopped working there like half of a year before he passed away. I don't know if the roommate was still working at OLG, not necessarily sure, but he died by the hands of that young man. OK. And so because of that, Marlo says the shooting that took place at Candy's restaurant kind of triggers her. Right. Because of how her nephew died. And I said it shouldn't have triggered you because where your nephew died was not at OLG and it had nothing to do with OL and a G. OK. It had nothing to do with them just because people work there. Like I feel like, OK, you could work at Walmart. OK. You could start working at Walmart six months ago. Right. You probably wasn't even at Walmart longer than a damn year, but you start working there six months ago or whatever. Right. Then you had a roommate of somebody else that worked at Walmart. Y'all got into it. You got popped. It's the, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you lost your life behind that. How is that Walmart's fault? Because they had two employees that, that decided to room with each other, get into an altercation, and then one of them got unalived. So like, how is that? That ain't Walmart's fault in my personal. So I'm a little confused as to how you're trying to force this thing on Candy. Then you want to show text messages of the interaction you and Candy show. But number one, you didn't even show all of the messages and what they said. I haven't even watched Candy speak on it yet to really know what the details were and whether Candy's going to show any of those messages or not. I said I'll check it out. We'll see if I had the time. I haven't had the time to check out the last two that she's done. So I'm going to try and check it out and see, okay? But outside of that, you ain't even show all of the messages. So what is it really giving, okay? Um, she says she wanted Candy to acknowledge it. 
And then as Candy, then says something like, why does Candy keep having having shootings? Is it a security issue? And then Courtney says, well, that's the culture that Candy creates. Bitch, are you stupid? Bitch, and see, this is why, let me just, let me get it together. Girl, get it to numb your whole ring, gay girl. Numb your whole ring, gay girl. Okay? Girl, numb your whole ring, gay. Like, let me get it together. Because Courtney... Courtney, are you okay? You're not. Um, ma'am, that pissed me off. That pissed me off. That's the culture that Candy creates. But you was just over there last week talking about how you too was from the hood, basically you ghetto. But that's the culture Candy creates. So let me ask you this. If that's the culture that Candy creates, is it or cultivates, as you say it, whatever, is that the same culture that Marlo cultivates when those boys decided to bust into her fucking house and steal rob with guns or whatever the case is? Is that also the culture that she cultivates for such an incident to happen to her? Is that and is that something that she and her nephews cultivate for somebody to come into their shit and run up in their shit and make their own decisions? So it's the audacity of you, Raggedy Ho, to sit up there and say that's the culture that she cultivates or whatever the case is. Absolutely not. I definitely um I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I do. And it was a few celebrities that got hit up. So is that the is that the culture that they cultivate that people can bust up in their shit and steal their shit? Is that the culture that they I'm just asking. So that don't make no sense to me. And you just wanted to have some shit to say. So Marlo says that her family is sour with candy. What y'all sour with candy for? That boy wasn't even working for candy at the time. What y'all sour, what y'all wanted her to do? Pay for the funeral? What did you want her to do? You want her to send flowers, this and that? And it's so funny to me that you sat up there and you talking about how, oh, my family sour. Why your mama came on the show last season talking about how she liked candy? If, y'all, if you so sour and you feel so much of a way about candy, why did you confide in her about what was going on with your nephews and shit? I'm a little confused. It's not making sense. It's definitely getting a storyline. Huh? Huh? What was it? But everybody sour. Y'all sour with candy. Oh, Okay. But you confiding in her too. Girl, get it together. Get your lies together, ma'am. Um, what else? Um, I feel like Marlo was fishing for something and trying to group her nephew's death in on candy shooting at her restaurant or whatever. Uh, we all know that. That's clearly obvious. Courtney says Candy is missing empathy and that she's bringing up something that happened 20 years ago when she said, okay, Marlo, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the slash in the face or whatever. I do feel like it was very old. Wasn't really necessary to bring up. Um, I do feel like Marlo does talk a lot about, you know, her past or whatever, at least to me, at least that's what I think. So it wasn't something that was going to phase her for real, even bringing that up, you know, saying, hey, let's talk about this and that, you know. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that's something she would shy away from. She'll probably be like, okay, then, yeah, let's talk about it. But Courtney, it's you having something to say, but then trying to at the same time act like you ain't got no issue with candy. Like, that's what I can't, I can't get with. I just, I can't get with that, Miss Courtney. Um, I'm waiting on the day that Marlo flips on your ass because it's going to happen. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, Because, yeah, it's just going to happen. Um, Sheree, fibroids, shrinking, figuring that out. Sonya. Um, Sonya talks with her parents about Ross wanting to have the house to himself. Her sister is upset about it. We also learned that um, her sister's husband quit being her assistant. I feel like the day... Sonya called that man in front of her sister. Her sister knew he was going to quit. I feel like he was planning on quitting before Ross even said he wanted them out the house. I feel like he, him quitting ain't had nothing to do with that. Not that he mad and he like, I'm quitting because Ross want us gone or whatever. Nah, that boy was finna be and quit. Because he gives lazy to me. Right? He definitely gives lazy as your assistant. Not y'all got a whole list of shit and he has yet to check off a single thing on there. What? So I don't know. One, I do feel like you have a lot of things on your list that not only he should be handling, but you do need somebody else that can handle it while he's doing this or that. You do need like two assistants. But at the same time, that man ain't trying to do shit. 
because I mean, like to me, I don't feel like it. Like you talk about you want to be in real estate, all of that. Instead of you <clears throat> declining a job with Sonya, going out there and actually getting you a fucking real estate job, figuring it out, you decided to settle to be her assistant because you probably thought that shit was gonna be easier. Absolutely not. The man ain't trying to do nothing. But let's keep going. Um, Sonya talks about how she no longer feels appreciated after it was her idea to bring them there and set them up for success. Um, that's on you. Okay. That's on you. You don't feel appreciated. I'm sure a lot of them didn't even ask for that. They, uh, they didn't ask for that. This was something that you wanted. And you know, whenever it's something that you want and other people may not initially see the vision, they're not going to appreciate things, how you appreciate them. It's really just that simple. And that's just what it is. Okay. Um, and they over time definitely took advantage of it because that's what you wanted. So that's what you want. Let me figure out ways that I could take advantage of it. And it is what it is. So I don't really feel sorry for you in that aspect while you over there about to cry and all that shit, girl. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. And it's like, it is giving, I guess, a little bit of self-centered because it's like, you're more so thinking about what it is that you want versus what other folks want. And I don't like that. Okay, um, so yeah, anywho, let's get on this bus ride and this lack luster ass trip they took. Marlo was late, Drew was sick, Candy has an award or uh, whatever she got going on, so she can't be there. Excuse me, Sonya has to leave early for work, then she going back, then she gonna head back to Alabama after leaving out, and I'm like, okay, now see, this is where I'm gonna have to be on Sonya's side with this, because I said, I felt like something was gonna go wrong with this trip, because I said, it's, I just feel like something's going to go wrong. And I said, damn, I can see me already signed with Sonya. It's the fact that you took the initiative to go down there with them. You're going to go back to do some work, and then you're going to come back? Um, Girl, you're doing more than what the fuck I probably would have done. I would have went for that day, had a good time, whatever, girl. I'm going to have to skip out, and I'll see y'all when, when y'all get back, okay? But anywho... There's that. So while they're on the on the bus on the way to Bama or whatever, Sonya brings up future and ex girlfriend talking about her about him, uh, her eating his butt, and then the whole conversation happened. Everybody was like, "Eating a butt? What?" Sheree's like, "Oh my God, I wouldn't even know what to do with that." Da 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 da. Um, Sheree, shut the hell up, girl. I feel like you probably ate Martell's butt, so it ain't nothing to like, girl. I believe it. I believe it because you give desperate to me, so you give desperate enough to sit up there and lick in between the niggas. But anyway, um. <laughs> Kenya says they know um, Sheree put Kenya out there and said, how was it when you did it? Like, I would have felt the way. If I told you some shit in, in private and you decide you want to sit up there and tell everybody to take a dig at me, bitch, those the type of friends that you need to watch, okay? Watch them type of ladies, okay? Because you didn't use this as a moment to get educated, bitch. You used this as a moment to try and embarrass me is what you did. And I see you, hope. I do. So then um, Kenya tried to talk about it, basically confirming that she gives a horrible a head, <laughs> horrible head, but she's good at doing a little licky licky in the back. Girl, no, ma'am. <laughs> Girl, I don't give a damn. You don't like the head. I ain't going past there. Period. Okay? That's just what it is. Okay? I'm not going to do all of that. Yeah, you should be glad he don't like the head. At least you ain't got to worry about your neck and your mouth and shit being sore. Hello? Hello? Because they take it forever to... Girl, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. I don't even know anybody that enjoys that. Like... You know, I just, I never understood the hype about that, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I ain't never did it, girl, but I'm just saying, like, what is it about it? Like, what's y'all, I ain't no man, so maybe that's why. But, I mean, I'm really talking about the women that enjoy doing that. Like, it's a lollipop or something. Like, girl, ain't nobody for to be doing it. Like, girl, uh-uh. Girl, go get me a tussy pop. And that's the only thing I'll probably go on or something like that. You know, but, girl, ain't nobody trying to be over here doing all the, girl, get y'all, like, to grow up. Okay. Anywho, dance rehearsal. They did a buck off. Sheree won. We already know that. Kenya won finna give shit to Marlo. And she damn sure won finna give shit to Courtney based on how she came at her girl. If it was between Monyetta and Sheree, she would have gave it to Monyetta. But Sheree won and Sheree's gonna end up doing the whole, uh, getting the, the nice room or whatever. Um, so they go out to lunch. Drew and Marlo is the conversation at this point. Kenya was trying to explain what it is that Drew told her, but then Marlo interrupts her and tells her that, um, you can't talk about it because you wasn't even there. Whatever, whatever. You can't even talk about it because you wasn't even there for you to even sit up there and try to explain. I can't even combat Marlo on that because I feel like if the roles were reversed and it was Kenya and Drew, I would be like, Marlo, shut the hell up because you wasn't even there. You know, I really would say that about her. Like, girl, you weren't even there. So I don't even know why you and your two cents in. Shut your ass up. Right? So I was with Marlo on that. 
but she's only trying to tell you what Drew said because Drew ain't here, you know. So um, Kenya says she was trying to tell her what Drew said to her. And she talks about how Drew felt as though Marlo was attacking her and standing over her and being very aggressive. Marlo says Kenya wasn't there, so she shouldn't have said anything. Then she says, you can tell the story then since you want to speak for me. I'll be quiet for the rest of the trip. And Kenya said, okay, then, girl, that's fine because we don't even need you. Ooh. I said, oh, you're right. I don't know why you invited her on a trip. Kenya, are you okay? That trip should have been, honestly, you, Manyetta, and Sheree, and that's it. If we couldn't get all of the cast to go, you should have chose the two ladies you wanted to go and call that shit a day. Anywho. So um, Marlo flips the conversation on Kenya and starts deflecting because she didn't want to talk about the Drew and the uh, in her situation. She wanted to talk about Kenya being bossy and acting like she in charge of folks and all this other stuff. I'm like, Marlo, you just deflecting, girl. If you're not going to tell the story of what, the happen what happened between you and Drew, I, I don't mind hearing from Kenya what Drew got to say. Or what Drew told her. But you wasn't trying to have that conversation. So, okay, fine. Hopefully we can have that conversation when both of y'all are in the room together, okay? Um, Kenya says that she wasn't going to entertain a clown because she was going to fuck around and turn into one. I said, I know that's right, girl. Stop talking to this hoe. Anywho, I just felt like Kenya gets under Marlo's skin so bad and Marlo really cannot take it. She cannot. It's like Marlo yearns for some type of approval and validation from Kenya and Kenya doesn't give it to her ever. Like the, the one of the funniest things was at the end when they went to the little bar or whatever, they went to the little lamp, whatever the thing, co cocktail, whatever the thing was, the party. Marlo comes over there and then Kenya said, you guys are 40, 40 minutes late or something like that. Or I gave you guys 40 minutes to be there. And they was like, no, you didn't. And I think Sonya said, no, I think Kenya said, I called y'all. And then Sonya said, you called me. And then Marlo, uh, Marlo said, you called me. And then Kenya said, I don't have your number. Like, and then started back talking to Sonya. I love to me how she dismisses Marlo. You could tell Marlo yearns for something from this woman and she doesn't give it to her. And Marlo needs to be that validated and it's probably because of how she looks up to Kenya and Candy and maybe that's why and she's changed her life so much to fit into that circle and the circle ain't really having it for her it's for real for real anywho so Mayetta Mayetta they're getting ready to go out Mayetta comes down with this damn aluminum foil uh jumpsuit which was cute to me and Kenya said, girl, what the hell you got on? Uh-uh. Girl, you got to go back upstairs. Like, come on, my yada. Like, no, you ain't got nothing else to wear. What? <sighs> Let me keep going. Okay. Now, when, when my yada went back upstairs to see what she could find, she calls Kenya. She says, oh, hey, girl, I forgot that I had, like, a black dress or whatever. Kenya didn't give a fuck. Kenya said, girl, um, you just going to have to meet us there. Like, I don't have time. Like, you going to have to meet us there. Uh, okay, then, girl. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Kenya, I don't know if I would have went off on your ass in that moment, but I would have told you about your damn self because what you would have known, don't treat me like you treat the mother hoes, okay? I'm here showing up for you to support you. And I'm also like, Kenya, how you going to be mad and frustrated with my Yetta if you weren't clear on the attire and what they really supposed to be wearing? Because I refuse to believe that if my Yetta knew the proper attire, she would not have walked downstairs in that outfit. Okay? I just refuse to believe that. So it's get like, and then you know what else? It makes me think about when you took the girls to that um, beach house and you sitting up there eating you some food, but you ain't getting nobody else food. And I understand you be over there producing, but at the same time, I feel like as much as you be wanting certain etiquette or proper or whatever, in all honesty, I hate when you do not handle trips appropriately. That pisses me off, especially for you to be a quote unquote bougie person like you are. It's the lack of communication for me. And I just, I don't, I don't like how you handled my yada. And I don't really like how you handled this trip overall so far. Okay. So Sheree, Sheree and Courtney and Kenya left the other ladies. Kenya never does. Yeah. I say she never does a good job with planning, um, trips. And I never understand that. Marlo says she would have went ham at the re at the restaurant if she was the old Marlo. This is what she's saying about when they was at the restaurant talking to Kenya. And it's like, bitch, you the same you the same B-I-T-C-H, ma'am. Wasn't you just going off on Drew? So how old is the Marlo that you're talking about? Because you was just going off on Drew, yelling in Drew's face because of a term. Because Drew said incident over saying the word shooting, you were doing too much. So I'm confused on what you, what? So 
how far back? Explain to the people. We want to know. How far back is the old Marla? What are you talking about? Ooh, anywho, <clears throat> ladies went off to the party. Um, they having a good time. Sonya and Marlo eventually arrived or whatever. So they moving around, walking around. First of all, they get into the facility. Ain't nothing giving cocktail. Ain't nothing giving upscale. Everything giving come as you are, a dress relaxed, a relaxed, um, business casual type shit. So Kenya thought she was going to a foundation or wherever it was. And it's like, girl, they played you. And then why would you go and you not tell these people that you're going to have a few of the ladies from of housewives with you? And why not tell them that you're likely going to be filming as well? Is that OK? I don't know why she did or didn't do that. And then when you come into the building, you telling people, excuse me, can you put your phone down? Can you da 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 da? And it's like, why are you telling these people that when all you had to do was let inform whoever you needed to inform that y'all were going to be there? And here's another thing to me. I'm sure y'all may have security on hand. I don't know if you do or don't. But my thing is you will want them to know that as well because you guys are bigger celebrities. And you just bringing these ladies into a room where it's like they ain't even got like, like they, they you know, protection or whatever the case is. You know, you don't know these folks. Yeah, you coming out here to have a good time. But and. You feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like she could have managed that trip a little better. And, and I like her, but I'm not going to let her slide on that shit because that was stupid. Um, What else? <clears throat> uh, Yeah, they went upstairs finally, going outside, having a good time, sitting down. Girl, they, they couldn't even sit down for two minutes before production came and said, hey, listen, um, the people are making a decision saying that you guys have to leave. And they're saying you have to leave um, because, you know, you guys are now a distraction. And everybody is paying more attention to you than they are the event. Bitch, what the fuck? What is going on at the event? What are we doing here? Like, there's nothing going on here at all. We're not, y'all not doing nothing but standing around. Boosty Collins and all this other shit that y'all out here doing. Girl, like, what is we doing? <clears throat> nothing. Standing around looking stupid. So what is the organization really about? And if that's the case, when Kenya came in, why didn't somebody that had her to be at that party and told her, hey, we want you here, it's about you, whatever, why ain't nobody walk up? I don't remember nobody walking up and really greeting her. Maybe I'm wrong. He's like, oh, hey, Kenya, you're here. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. X, Y, Z, A, B, C. It just looked like they just walked into a party. So my question is, Kenya, did y'all even go to the right place? Or did y'all go to a completely different address? And then now they're saying, hey, y'all y'all can't be here because I don't know what they got going on. They got the cameras and stuff. Like, nah, it's, a, it's distracting. And then I'm like, if y'all did book her, why did y'all book her and then turn around and tell this lady that she's a distraction? Because here's the gag. Whether she had cameras there or not, when she walked into the room, she was going to be a distraction anyway because she's a celebrity. She was going, like, that's just what it is. People are going to be like, oh, my God, that's Kenya. They're going to want to walk up. They're going to want to take a picture, whatever. If it was Kenya, Monietta, and Sheree, and that's it. They was going to want to get pictures. So either way, when you're booking a celebrity, she was going to be a distraction anyway, which makes me question whether or not Kenya were y'all at the right location is what I'm wondering. So I don't know. Something was a little off. Not sure what it was when Kenya told the ladies, hey, we got to get up and we got to go. Let's do this at the hotel because I have to go. I did not like how she handled that. And when Sonya said, I feel like we're in a place where we're left out. We don't know what's going on. I, ha I have to agree. I have to agree. I feel like that's not fair. If you brought me out of town to be on a trip, I done got all dressed up, even changed my outfit to be out here. And now all of a sudden we weren't even here 20 minutes and we got to go. I couldn't even get a piece of a drinky drink for real, for real, get a little buzz on there. Like I couldn't do nothing. Now I got to go. And you ain't even telling me what's going on. That's whack to me. And I feel like you owe those ladies an explanation. <clears throat> so because they was clueless, they was irritated. And I think that everybody has a right to feel that way if you brought them out somewhere. So, Mar so then the ladies, they talk. Then they decide they're going to go over there to Kenya's door, beat on her door while her daughter is in the room. And first of all, whether her daughter is in the room or not, that's disrespectful to me. Do not beat on my fucking door because I haven't done that to yours. OK, don't kick on my fucking door because I'm not answering the door as quick as you want me to. Whether my daughter's in this room or not. So she kept doing it, doing the damn most, because obviously Marlo was trying to get a rise and a reaction out of Miss um, Kenya. But I feel like somebody else could have hit the door as well and not just Marlo. I don't know who that other person was, but somebody else, I believe, hit the door. And Monietta, I'm questioning whether or not you were laughing 
was that funny? I don't know if you were laughing, but I feel like you could have been. And then I'm, I'm wondering, like, there ain't nothing really funny about that, okay? But anywho, so Kenya comes to the door and yells at Marlo and tells her, what the f*** are you doing? Are you crazy? I have my daughter in here. My daughter's in this room. First of all, ma'am, I don't even know if I believe that because ain't no way. I don't, I don't if my child is, I, and I can only speak off of how I'm going to respond to something, okay? If my do if you're beating on my door and my child's in there, I'm gonna and my child's laying down. I'm gonna open the door. I'm not gonna yell though, but I'm gonna cuss you the fuck. What the fuck is you doing? You see my baby. I got my baby here. You know I bring my baby here all the time. So I don't even know why you out here doing the most kicking on my door and stuff like that. But if you want to see me, give me just a second. And I swear to God, I'll be out here in just a few minutes to address show it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I would I would have lowered my voice. Because somebody beating at your door and your daughter's in there and you're reacting in that manner and you're saying your daughter is in, like that doesn't make your daughter feel no comfortable knowing that you're screaming and yelling as well to the top of your lungs. You feel me? So I, I don't think that to me, okay, if I'm conscious of my child being in a room, I'm not finna open no door and I'm finna be yelling and cussing and I, that's just me, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get real quiet with y'all. I'm going to lower my voice, but I'm going to snap on you, bitch. And I'm going to get you together because I'm going to be out in just a motherfucking second, ho. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I felt. Now, I feel like after Kenya closed that door, Marlo, now see, now that second time, you probably could have got a little loud and cussed that whole the fuck out. And then my child just got to be okay because, bitch, I tried to talk to you real sensible the first round. Now I'm finna, I'm, I told you I'm finna come out here and see about joy. Because Marlo did it again and said she didn't give a fuck about her child being in the room. She didn't give a fuck about her child being in the room, X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, whatever. Put your child in another room and all of that. Um, I ain't like that. I ain't, I ain't like that. I saw some people feeling like, um, can you make enough money to have her child somewhere else? No, the fuck. Listen, I don't give a damn how much money I make. Kenya did have help. She had her nanny there to take care of her child. But if you think that I'm, I'm required to just send my child off to a whole nother room, I don't have to do a goddamn thing. Okay. I ain't seen my child all day. I'm going to see my child tonight. So my child going to be in my room. Y'all don't know how this baby sleep. Y'all don't know if that baby can sleep by herself or whatever the case is, or she got to be right there next to her mama or something like that or whatever the case is. Girl, who the fuck are y'all? No, her child was in her room. At the end of the day, and whether a child was in that room or not, Marlo should have never came to her door beating on it in that capacity ever. Okay, so I hate to say it, although I would not have handled it like Kenya did. Kenya answering that door, cussing her ass the fuck out is exactly what you get because you should have never been coming to that lady door being on her door like that. And then you mad because you got cussed the fuck out. Now you want to leave and you want to close doors on people because you feeling the way. No, ma'am, not how that goes. Okay. Get you a grip. And because of those things and how you showed yourself last week, girl, it's giving get this lady her mental her mental uh, room. Yes, ma'am. We are checking. Yes. Marlo Hampton, come to the front, please. Marlo Hampton, come to the front, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've already filled out your paperwork. Yes, you will be in room. 125 there you go okay they'll escort you down the hall yes you will eat three times a day yes we will give you breakfast um yeah you will have your therapy meetings throughout the day um during lunch time you will be able to come out and mingle with the other guests and things and then shortly after that we'll be sending you back to the room that you're confined in um should you need any more therapy sessions we'll bring you back out and then you can get ready for dinner we'll let you have a little conversation with your family members and then we'll send you back okay Okay, yeah, send this bitch on, okay, send her on, because she got some other shit going on, I don't care about how nobody feel, because I said what I said, and that's all I have to say, I am Jamie, that's me, if you have yet to like the video, go ahead and do so, okay, um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Jamie, that's me, and I will catch you guys in the next one, bye-bye.